staggering impacts and stylish action, the slow and steady onslaught from a device of brutal efficiency. Hi, the Six Snipes here, coming back to the logical conclusion of when there's just so much happening in Insurgency and I have all this content to cover. <laughs> In fact, this was supposed to come subsequent to the guides on the P90 Infector. Yeah, remember when those were supposed to be a thing? But I guess console release means that's not getting dropped till late February or something. Regardless of the situation, I'll just kick off Season 6 of Gun Guide with possibly the most requested topics in the series. You know, aside from the AK. That being, the shotguns. Stupid, I'm not gonna let you get the chance. Taking a look today at an item as American as Killdozers and Apple Pie, I'm Six Snipes, and this is the M870. You are watching... Gun guy. The Remington Model 870 holds a special place in the hearts of both country and COD boys alike as being widely regarded to be pretty much the shotgun. Every archetype you have in your head of bubblegum chewing, slide racking, henchman blasting gun that's also accessible on the side of every tractor south of Oklahoma pretty much conforms to this weapon. While it may not be the trench gun that single-handedly carried the entirety of the United States ground forces through two world wars, the M870 has a reputation of excellence deeply ingrained in the pages of history, that being the surface weapon during the Vietnam War that wasn't an absolute piece of shit at the time. Why are you bullying me? As well as action in the Iraq War and a whopping 11 million models produced and put in the hands of as many service members as God and Joe Biden fearing Americans. Rambling Joe Biden. What the fuck? And while that's all well and good, the natural course of life demands that any tractor cannon popular enough to be used by an armed force be placed into a never-ending number of video games. You're gonna be hard-pressed to find one these days without this piece. I personally adored in Siege, and every time picking it up in any game since, I make the solemn oath to carry out the spirit and the power of the once almighty recruit rush. <laughs> Legends remember. And while there's a lot of variety to its format and features, the one we get in the game is pretty much the standard military iteration. Long barrel and a 7 shell tube with just enough Picatinny space to slot on all of your useless attachments. In truth, I must say that if you're gonna be a breacher or really any class, for just two credits, a shotgun and specifically this one gives you the most robust performance and ultimately bang for your buck out of anything else at its price range. This is pretty much on brand with the shotguns in general. They're really the gun to have for potentially inexperienced users in the real world and like this one can often be quite cheap but very functional nonetheless and while at such a low price tag for its package you really don't need much more than what you get sure you can drop a credit to get marginally different ammo types more on this later but in earnesty the default firing medium is pretty much as lethal as need be read if you were going to play offensively the weight combined with the cost of this weapon will make you a fast efficient and antagonizing threat to the enemy especially in the early game when reaching the opponents and denying them from taking positions off the bat is a very powerful asset. The ghost ring style iron sight is very clean and clear and pretty much as usable as it needs to be. If you're gonna be breaching you really don't need a holographic and often I found this to be superior to any as it gives a pretty good picture of how the spread is gonna land and even works to kill precisely at the ranges you'd expect it to. Speaking of range, video games have perhaps engineered you to believe that shotguns are some inaccurate idiot cannon which slays out at point blank but rapidly deteriorates at range and is null at 20 yards. Yeah, no. This is without question the most faithful interpretation in any game I've played of just how devastating a proper shotgun is, both in proximity and entirely disconnected from enemies and engagements. So if you have any takeaway from this video, even if you aren't planning on using the gun at all, this and the other pump action are perfectly capable of bringing down a full health, armored target at ranges you will not believe, and so long as you're landing the moderately consistent and tightly grouped pellets, you will kill nearly every time. The obvious downside being, this shotgun is a lot no. less stupid proof no. than you think. Lesser games would make this a fallback pick when you're on tilt and need something brainless to wreak havoc on the enemy with at least close range. However, the spread being as tight as it is, the mythical missing with a dozen simultaneous projectiles does in fact occur a lot more and by a lot narrower than you might think. If you miss, you give up the advantage of the first shot, you die. If you potato and literally fumble around while the enemy recovers from a flashbang, you die. 
do not mistake this for a brainless weapon, and if you want that, I recommend a good old MG, but until we cover that, I'll tell you what's good on this. Flesh head rounds do not add or subtract to pellet count, nor does it skew any accuracy, range, or damage from what I can discern. It only serves to double penetration, making kills through thicker surfaces more doable. Slugs, on the other hand, just changes it around to one big projectile that's pretty much a kill on impact. After extensive use, this is rapidly becoming my favorite of the three, as it removes the factor where landing half the spread of pellets results in half health enemies slapping your ass cheeks before you can finish racking the gun for a second shot. <laughs> You either hit them or you don't with slugs. Simple and basic. Unfortunately, contrary to what you might think, it probably isn't the greatest thing for range as I find any kill you can make with a single slug can also be done with a single flesh shed or pellet shell, albeit less consistent, but with a spread you're at least more likely to inflict some damage and often kill where you would have missed entirely with the slug to begin with. It's a bit of a trade-off and I can call it a draw. As for optics, half these things like the Cobra and the OKP just suck ass as it's really difficult to tell where the pellets may be going some Sometimes to begin with, and I prefer a neat circle like the holographic or just a simple dot, as sometimes even lining up the T reticle of this guy here doesn't net a kill. Grips, now those are interesting. Loading is a bitch for this gun because of how long it takes to get every single shell in one at a time, much like a bolt action sniper. Most people will resort to using the loading grip as that just dramatically helps, however, someone in the comments of my attachments video brought to my attention that the recoil grip actually allows the shotguns to fire faster, something that really helps if you're a shit aim like me. It is worth noting, however, that the stats of the actual gun do not denote this as a fact, and it is likely some bug. After all, the exact same thing happened when the reload grip was added, and it did that for the Taz exclusively, so I find it overwhelmingly likely that this is not a feature, and it will get patched out as soon as possible, but keep in mind anyways. And finally, for muzzles, you have the compensator, which is okay, I guess, but you really shouldn't need to shoot more than once that fast, and really, even with a boosted fire rate, the time to realign your aim is significant. The much more desirable suppressor will completely nullify an otherwise loud as shit, hey I'm over here come shoot me noise and convert it to more of a the taco bell once a round two except it's your butthole sort of deal. I will note that you really don't need to make the barrel profile any longer with a two foot burrito sticking out the front as even default it gets in the way in closer shaves and it really does prevent me from getting kills while hugging surfaces which sucks so the suppressor really doesn't help with that. My personal build might deadass just be default shotgun with slugs and use that money on grenades instead because to recite the age-old breacher philosophy, why would you flash them and push when the grenades can just do all the work? Finally, between the three skins, I would say the grit has a place, but only if you're not using it with attachments as those won't get skinned with it. The Midnight Blue or whatever is neat, but won't be doing you any favors for blending in, but the most recent sexy-ass forest green that's a bundle bonus for season 1 and 2 content makes this piece in particular, as well as some other favorites like the MP7 and G3, just sexy as can be. Potent as it is portable. Large as it is loud. A weapon of choice for someone who doesn't care to shoot twice. Anyway, that's basically the M870. Next episode, I'm going to show you the Insurgency counterpart, the much lesser regarded Taz, and demonstrate just how different these two really are. But until then, I'm Six Snipes. This is the Model 870 Shotgun, and you've been watching Gun Guide. I'll see you out there in Sandstorm. Oh dang, we still got three per? I think I got three people with that bullet.